We are working on getting these EA drones figured out. Brand new drone, outside left nozzles, not working. Not really terrain following that well. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. We're getting low voltage warnings for some reason. All right, boys, we got a problem. We got two drones disconnected. We're right next to each other. Let me walk back here, see if I can get connection walking back here. That's gonna be a problem. Okay, okay, yep, yep. I'm reconnected. Are you reconnected? Super jumpy, it's trying to catch up to what I had done already. Hey guys, before we start this video, I wanna let you know that the problems and the issues that you see us having in this video have since been resolved. But again, I wanna show you guys this video because I believe it's not more than fair to show you guys that we have had some struggles trying to figure out these EA J100 drones. If you guys didn't watch my last video, make sure to go over there and watch that video because ultimately, guys, I'm not here to try to destroy the EA J100 drone. That really is not what I'm trying to do in these videos. I just wanna show you the, you know, the issues that we've had and then also tell you that I do believe that this EA drone has a good chance of becoming a really good drone. It's just not there yet is the way I feel about it. If you would ask me what is a better drone, J100 or a T50, I'm going to tell you a T50. That being said, here's us trying to get the J100 to fly efficiently and get some acres right. Hey, it's Mike with New Way Ag. This video is going to be started basically in the middle of the operation where me and Jay are running the J100s. We wanted to put them through some paces. We wanted to test some batteries. We wanna just check a bunch of different parameters in there. And so we were already into it by the time I started recording this, but let's get into it. Here we go. Using the J100s. We're actually getting the system figured out. We're going a long way with these J100s. The batteries are charging really fast. The drones are landing where they're taking off. This is all auto. I like how fast we go into the field. We're figuring out about different droplet size. Because they have multiple different discs, they have an outer disc and an inner disc. If you go up on your microns, you have to take the outer disc off. Some of that stuff we didn't know and we're learning the system. Is it as easy? Is it as user-friendly right out of the box as a DJI? No, but it is an option. And I do like what we got going on here with these batteries. We're running one battery. That drone you can see is back there. It's almost 3,000 feet. We were just talking about how the batteries are working but we've been running two batteries in this drone. We got a problem, second time it did it now. Basically, I think what's happening is the battery's getting hot and then we get a low voltage reading on the controller. And when it hits low voltage, it returns to home. And I've already reset the voltage to not give me a low voltage warning unless it's at 40, but it's doing it at like 48 and 47. We're gonna put that battery back in there and then we're gonna fly it in the back and see if we get that same low voltage. Okay, so we just put this battery in here. It should charge. We got this orange battery light. It's pretty hot. Okay, it's charging. All right, so we do have low main battery voltage. What does this tell you up there? 48 volts. 48 volts. Now go into your settings and check, because we don't have, I mean, we've set that to 40. Go up right there, that's at 40. Three times now. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and get this drone powered on, start running two, and see if we're gonna have connection issues. I'm gonna power on my drone. Controllers next to each other, you gonna send yours? Send it. Okay, just took mine off. Heading out into the field. All right, boys, we got a problem. We got two drones disconnected. 
We're right next to each other. Let me walk back here, see if I can get connection walking back here. That's gonna be a problem. Okay, okay, yep, yep. I'm reconnected. Are you reconnected? Super jumpy, it's trying to catch up to what I had done already. Okay, so I am connected. All right, I'm gonna get close to you again. We're now operating right next to each other. Yours is still connected, mine's still connected. That's good. So definitely a connection issue when you have more than one. I took it off and within 40 seconds, yeah, it, it had uh, lost connection. Jay's still out back. Every now and then he's losing connection. All right, I set mine to spray a little field right here. I want to be closer to it. See how it does. Brand new drone, outside left nozzles, not working. Don't know why. It's not really drain following that well. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. We're getting low voltage warnings for some reason. This nozzle won't uh, pump fluid. We're having problems with that. Those, those two are working. This one works, but not that. Another nice thing about the new way trailer, if you gotta work on your stuff, you don't have to worry about your screws falling down through your floor. Okay, so that thing's disconnected. All right, got her fixed. By the way, Jay, we're up here working and the generators are right there. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, we're having a conversation. It's, it's no big deal. We're out here trying to get this figured out for you guys. We want you to have the best system if you're out spraying acres. You got the best trailer, you might as well run the best system and we're working on. This is how we have our Predators set up. It's not gonna work. We have that deflection pipe and it still gets so hot. So we gotta get that figured out. We are working on getting these EA drones figured out. We're working on it. We should probably do one more run, use our batteries that we have, and then we're gonna call it. We just got back up on the trailer. We're gonna go ahead and test this now to see if it's working, spray on. Okay, perfect, that's working. So we're also troubleshooting if I build a boundary on my phone, when I do that, we bring it into the controller like this. We cannot go higher than, yeah, 13 feet per second. When I was building boundaries earlier on my phone and it asked me power cord, meaning power line. And this is what we're talking about. Like the translation is getting messed up somewhere between the Chinese and English language. Right now, we're just gonna do one more test and then I'm gonna send that drone into that power line. Let's see what it does. Jay's uploading the mission to the drone. He slides the bar, drone takes off. But it goes super slow. It's not doing it. Oh, it backed up. Yeah, so it did it. Wow. Right up over it and down the other side. It goes over the power lines just very slow. We could turn up the speed, but I don't want to do that. I just don't want to deal with getting a drone out of the power line today. I would always recommend trying to build your boundaries uh, right next to the power lines. Don't make it go actually through the power lines but it has that feature. It asks you if it has power lines. All right, so there you go. You've seen the video, you've seen us struggle. I wanna add this to the video just because I wanna let you know what I'm thinking about the EA drones as of right now today. I've questioned why have we run into these issues right off the rip? I've been told that there's hundreds, there's thousands of these drones in China and in Brazil. And so I think like, are there really that many drones in these countries? And if so, how have they not had these issues? The two controllers next to each other losing connection or the battery voltage dropping, causing the drone to return to home. It's just something personally that I've been thinking about. And so I've been wanting to know, like we're now fixing the problems. Again, I will stress this drone company. I do believe that EA will become better because of all the things that we, meaning us applicators, us people that have these J100s, they're telling them things that need to get better. 
and I think with time, it will get there. But th that's just my final thoughts on the J100. How it is right now is, you know, issues. Why are we having so many? If you're willing to work through this process, trying to make the drone better, you're going to learn a lot through it, and with time, it'll, it'll be a better drone. So that's all I got for you guys on the J100. I would say if you bought a J100, I think you'll be fine. You'll get acres covered with it. It's just if you're brand new into the industry and you're looking between the two, meaning J100 or a T50, if a T50 is an option, I probably steer you that way. Now, I'm not going to tell you that's the only way as of right now because the J100 does terrain follow nice. It has LiDAR. There's some really cool features about it. It's just overall experience, user experience, and some of the hardware software glitches here and there. I have to go toward the T50. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Hit that subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys on the next one.